Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Rogue Life. Today we are going to be continuing the voyages of Penny on this terrifying sunless sea. When last we left off, she was in the Empire of Hand, the place we've been trying to get to for the Admiralty for quite some time. Now let's see if she can survive with her soul intact to make it home to her baby mama. Which, it's not... I mean... It's weird. Anyway, I'm trying to buy a house so my kid has a place to live. I want to get back with my soul. Please. Let's see how it's going. Mmm, loading screens. This is fine. Everything's fine. I definitely did not click something weird and possibly crash the game. Everything's fine. So anyway, I need to uh, sail the rest of the Empire. Uh, oh, interesting. Luckily, it took out the uh, island that I've already visited. So let's go check it out. <laughs> Scouting trip. The Ash Ithm Isthmus. God, I, I hate this word so much. It's gonna it's gonna appear again, and I'm gonna be so sad. Neither man nor ape claims the volcanic remnant between islands. Haunted, they say. Ridiculous. The trip offers little time to think on the penties. Hmm. Technically, they are monkeys rather than apes, but it is not tactful to remind them of this. To their high-souled faces, the accepted name is Pentecost Apes. In private, though, the monkeys is about as common. It is, one might say, an ad hominoid insult. Uh, ash Isthmus. Black beaches give way to an oasis of gently glowing trees and a scent of rotting flowers. Hmm. Enter the forest. Parasynthetic vegetation thrives in the Empire of Han's fertile soil and coal, cool humidity. Wide natural paths run between clumps of trees, softly lit by a dim green glow and occasional glimmer of false stars through the canopy. Only the cracking of leaves and the soothing sounds of water break the serenity of the volcano-forged paradise. I can hunt for supplies. That's not going to work. Or I can relax in a hot spring. I'm sure nothing bad will happen. Steam and a hint of sulfur gently rise from a secluded natural pool flanked by trees and mushrooms. A moment for yourself. You slip out of your itchy clothes and into the welcoming caress of hot, deep water. The salts and sweats of zailing life melt away as you simply float, bare and free. Above, false stars glimmer bright enough to be worthy, worth wishing on. All around, the glow of the trees casts ambient calm on a silent peace. How long has it been since you had a moment like this? Since London? Since longer? Oh. Oh, interesting. I can choose what I think about. I have never... I'm thinking about the child, that makes sense. Your legacy to the world, come what may. Their story is yet to be written. Perhaps the Z beckons them as it did you. Perhaps it does not. Salt cannot run in everyone's veins. Will they be the toast of the singing mandrake? Run with the scoundrels of the flit. You cannot be as much of their life as they may or may not wish to be. But that doesn't mean they... Wait, what was that sound? It sounded like... Giggling? Caught! A tiny blonde girl perches, watching on the rock. Her innocent grin is spiced with mischievous glee. She moves like a monkey, but she giggles like an imp at the look on your face of being caught bathing in her hot spring, and one that floods into it as, and the one that floods in onto it as she scoops up your clothes. Oh, damn it! She stole my clothes. A monkey foundling. Shipwrecked as a baby, raised by the Empire of Hands, she now plays between the worlds of apes and men, neither quite one nor entirely of the other. 
Demand she put that down at once. A desperate swim. Cursed these relaxed limbs. I'm on a quest for dignity no more than zero. Uh, hey, give that back. At once you shout, or there will be trouble. The anger only makes it funnier. The monkey foundling sticks out her tongue, grins, and scampers off into the forest on all fours. Your stolen possessions and a leather bag slung over her back. Her giggling echoes from deep in the forest as you splash after her in your goose bumps. Do I chase her? Because this seems like a great way to get killed. I chase the monkey foundling. Into the forest, the branches scrape against your skin, the damp mud squidges between your toes. There is no sign of the monkey foundling, but her tracks are easily followed. Forest clearing. Enough of this nonsense. No, the footprints lead here. She has not even attempted to hide them. It's as if she wants you to follow. Ouch! Your hand slaps to your stinging buttock. The little stone lands in the dirt as a familiar giggle comes from above. You look to see the monkey foundling dangling upside down from a branch by her legs, a blowpipe in hand and, oh god, and bag just out of reach, tantalizingly so. Taking a deep breath, you politely, very politely, request the return of your damned clothes right now. The monkey foundling listens and gives it some thought, tapping her blowpipe against her lips as she decides. Say please, she grins. Please. There it is said. Pretty please? Pretty please, with an imaginary cherry on top, if she likes. The monkey foundling has never heard of cherries. Pretty, pretty please, she says, stifling a giggle. I'm not going to throw a rock at her. I don't, it's not even going to work. Damn it, it's freezing. How much longer? Pretty, 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 pretty please. The monkey foundling is poker faced. Your anguish, oh my god. Okay, pretty, pretty, pretty. Pretty, 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 please. Your anguished plea echoes through the trees. A gift from the monkey foundling. You appear to have pretty, pretty pleased her, and she decides to deser you deserve a reward. She fisses in her bag and generously throws you a sock. A single, solitary sock. She learns a few new swear words as she races off across the branches, nearly doubled up with laughter. So great, now oh, I have a sock. That's it, I'm gonna try and pursue her. Ah, oh, damn, it's a trap. Your feet step into the coiled rope just as the monkey finally cuts loose the counterweight and you feel yourself flying upside down into the trees. Of course she has traps. The wider empire has no shortage of would-be invaders, man and monkey alike. She sit sits back and enjoys the show as you flail around trying to get free before apparently taking pity on you. Pity, however, turns out to be casually and without warning cutting through the rope dangling you in the air and sending you falling back with surprise thump to the muddy forest floor it knocks the air out of your lungs but you are otherwise unharmed she pauses for a moment to make sure before her grin spreads back again and she races off to continue the game i will continue the quest for dignity dear listeners we must The monkey foundling slides down a vine in front of you. She sticks out her tongue and scampers through the break in the trees. A marsh of terrible stench. Oh, this is just going to keep getting bad. Eventually, it's going to do a heart test and I'll win. Uh, it is a place that skunks would think twice of entering. The Empire of Hands has had such creatures. If the Empire of Hands had such creatures. The monkey foundling, of course, is unconcerned as much as home here as high in the branches or running the forest paths. She almost dances effortlessly across a thin fallen tree that crosses the mire, surrounded by the foulest bubbling mud that has ever invaded your nostrils. She balances in the middle, daring you to try to follow. Uh... She wants to play, you'll play. This is even less likely to work. Through the cro though the crossing is treacherous, particularly when one's hands are torn between modesty and balance, you slowly cross the march. It is slow, slow going. Your muddy feet slide against the thin trunk as it buckles and strains under your weight. Inch by inch, step by step, you slowly make your way across. Until, bored, the monkey foundling suddenly jumps up and down. 
The tree rolls under your feet. Your balance fails. You slip, tumble, are embraced by a marsh whose smell you will never leave you. You fight to the surface, streaming brown and dripping green, violently coughing up, a gagging throatful of the foul slime. The monkey foundling sits cross-legged in the safety of the trees, holding her nose as she points and laughs. This is just the worst. She pirouettes on a tree stump, saluting you as you approach. Ambush! A screeching Pentecost ape, ape drops from the branches. The shock on the monkey foundling face makes it clear this is not part of her little game. Its rage is focused entirely on her, ghost of the Ash Isthmus, the bright soul which it can uplift itself to glory. It limps from some trap earlier, its fur blood-soaked and glistening. It lunges at the monkey foundling, who half rolls, half falls off the stump, and yelps as it catches her by the leg. She rolls, shrieks her own howl as she lashes back and, with a kick that shatters Fang and splits its lip. This only further enrages the frothing ape. It strikes. I'm gonna help her. She doesn't deserve to die. Although she may have no end to her trouble. You reach for a stone and bring it crashing down on the distracted ape's head. Its skull cracks, dampness spreading. It collapses to the ground, hard. It's not a child's face that looks up at you. Still, you reach a hand down. The monkey foundling just stares at it for a moment, something human returning as the adrenaline fades. For a moment it looks as though she will, f t she will take it, but no. She leaps up on her own, bounding away towards the dark safety of her jungle, and then stops, hesitates, looks back, and tilts her head, beckoning you to follow. It is a look that suggests the game is over, but perhaps you are not yet quite finished. A small hut in the middle of the forest. Is this where the monkey foundling lives? Why would she lead you here, of all places? The monkey foundling herself is nowhere to be seen, but she has left something. It sits out in the hut, carefully placed by a large, happy face drawn in the black sand, a little prize for being such a good sport. Your clothes, however, are nowhere to be seen, of course. As the monkey part of her would no doubt demand, where would, be in the, where would be the fun in that? Well, there's no avoiding this any longer. An out-of-uniform experience. The crew reacts with the expected amount of sympathy to your naked return, which is to say, exactly none. By the time you aboard the ship, every last crew member is on hand to see and cheer, with more than a couple letting off flares and improp as impromptu fireworks. It is many, many days before the needling ceases and you are able to give an order without first scouring it for innuendo. On the plus side, it does boost at least the rest of the ship's mood while it lasts, and you have a new treasure for your collection. You've had worse days. I lost a lot of terror. That's really good, actually. This is great. Thanks, little monkey child. Well, human child. But it's complicated. Fountainhead Island. Ancient secrets peek out of the trees. Any may visit, but few penties ever bother to make the pilgrimage. The Empire of Hands is hardly as old as they pretend, but mimicry and theft infuses their whole culture. If the penties have come to think that rulers should be buried in ancient temples, then it is ancient temples they will build. It would hardly be the first time their attempts to mirror humanity have entirely missed the point. Fountainhead Island Swiftly growing vegetation keeps a thick forest wrapped around variably ancient ruins. Even the yet-to-be-plundered ones have heavily scarred with crowbar marks. A temple in the forest. A treasure hunt. Oh, an ancientish treasure map. Interesting. How the fuck am I supposed to get that? In a clearing of parasynthetic trees looms an imposing structure of wood and stone. The vault of the first emperor. It stretches through the forest in a number of styles, each designed by the whims of the latest Pentecost apes who felt it needed to be, to be made grander. It would take a dedicated team to break in and uncover its secrets. Perhaps you will bring one here later. Return to the boat. Eh, well, there's that. One last place. Hearthsake Island. A thin pillar of greasy yet appetizing smoke rises from the only human settlement on the island. The Blumenbach Quarantine. The Admiralty has never stated precisely why it seeks to keep the Empire confined, though most opposition to it fades once said opposers actually encounter a Pentecost ape. They have been easy to corral, however, though they do not lack wit. 
There is not an inventive bone in their hairy bod bodies, but no amount of stolen humanity has taught them the art of creating engines. The Lost. The survivors of a pirate expedition have stolen this land, where apes were unwelcomed say, except as an entree. The Lost Treasure Hunter. He squints at a map, muttering incoherently. North for each city the bats brought down. He wipes his brow. Have you seen a big X on the ground by any chance? I got these four map pieces that got me this far and said X would mark the spot, but I couldn't find an X anywhere. He looks at the map sadly. It, it should be here. It says, now where am I supposed to dig? He is too busy to talk right now, but adds that he will be in the village later if you want to trade ad adventuring supplies. Don't try the meatballs, he warns, getting back to his search. You just don't don't want to do that. Approach the village. Greasy smoke and guiltily tempting aromas rise from the collection of huts around a long beached pirate ship and a field of pointedly impaled monkeys. Sorry about that, booms the boisterous pilot, lowering smoking blunderbuss as bits of shattered tree rain down. New arrival, are we? Well, if you haven't got a tail, you're right by me. He squints, momentarily suspicious. You don't have a tail, do you? Wouldn't want it past the thieving little buggers to go shaving one of their own. Wouldn't know fair play if it kicked him right up the arse. His voice is louder than his blunderbuss. The congealed meat juices in his thick beard are better not considered. Hearthsake Village it was not madness that drove these pirates to cannibalism, but years of being shipwrecked without the comfort of meat. After a while, any meat would do. They seem a friendly sort and are shocked at the idea that they would ever be such poor hosts as to eat a guest, but then they have no shortage of supplies. Back to Port Stanton. The Z is quiet, the journey is pleasing, uneventful. You have not been eaten by cannibal pirates, all things considered a successful trip. Explorations complete. Few have reason to brave the waters of this far east, especially with the trade embargo. The Admiralty will pay especially well for up-to-date intelligence. All of them warrant further attention. For now, though, it would be best to see if your initial discoveries can whet the interest of anyone back home. 100 fragments is great, actually. Comprehensive port report. Anything I can do in Port Stanton? No, I'm not selling my soul. God, go to hell. The Zeppelin. Turned away. Two monkey guards wielding rifles and rusty bayonets block the bridge. This is not for your eyes, outsider. Avert them. Walk away. Walk faster. Good human. Uh, do you guys have shops? Nope. Uh, alright. Uh, I've got nine fuel. Uh, I've got everything that I came here for. Look for a rowboat. Well, uh, I think I need to, I think I need to go. So let's see. That's where the Empire is. Uh, I can go straight west to Port Cecil, and then up to the Salt Lions. Let's do this. Got plenty of supplies. If I start running low on fuel, maybe I can, you know, do it. Burn some supplies for some fuel. It's a terrible exchange rate, but it can be done. Deary me. There's been so much to read, like, I haven't gotten to talk about, like, non-game stuff for a while. Um. It's weird. Oh, I should send out a Z-Bat. Oh. What's this interesting thing? Some distance. Shallowing Isles. Tigalar Bay. The mists of the Sea of Autumn get into your eyes. Oh, bye! <laughs> the s wait, sorry, I thought it was Shallowing Isles. Swallowing Isles? 
You are being watched. Let's go. Oh, Jesus. Ooh, let's go south. I certainly cannot handle a fight right now. My ship is just terrible. God, everything's bad. I might as well turn on my light since I've been spotted. that I didn't find a dock back there. Well, maybe I'll have to come back later. There's gotta be one. Oh, no. Wait, what's that? Oh, that's Port Cecil. Everything's fine. I could I could play in a chess game real quick. Oh, can I get supplies here? Maybe I can get supplies. I can't remember. Uh, I'm a, a very bad player of this game. Uh, because I should be keeping track of where I can get supplies. Because otherwise I'd die. Um, or have to eat the crew. I got seven crew. That's just not a good way to think about things. Ventured a fog bank, that's fine. Oh, shoot, Mary of dear sweet Christ. It's a shark monster. Okay, let's get out of here. So, I, uh, I probably shouldn't start talking about uh, Lady Killer in a Bind just yet. Uh, though, if anybody is familiar with the work of Christine Love, uh, you should check it out. It looks like it's a very fun uh, graphic novel that she's been working on, like, forever. <gasps> oh, damn, I am going to get into a fight. First, Port Cecil. Chops? Yes, good answer. Uh, I guess it's been so long since I've been here that I will read the description again. Rumpled convolutions of coral fill the water, glimmering with silvery light. The harder you look, the more you see shapes amid the chaos, almost as if they were sculpted. This one could be a crenellated castle, that one a horse's head. A neat little port huddles in the side of the coral island, prosaic imperial docks and houses tucked away in a baroque organized organic chaos. In the curious silvery, silvery light... Among the frozen chaos of coral, the scene has the unreal air of a pencil sketch, crumpled and discarded. Gather intelligence. I already know. That's that's not particularly important. Gather Centilac. I've got a 30% chance, and I have something awaiting me at port. Very chancy prospect. I'm going to play some chess. You don't often look at chess pieces, not really look. The bishops with their hooks, the knight with its mane and teeth, the kin with its cream, the kin and the cream, white mingled with red, the roots that pin the corner of the board down to keep you safe from your opponent. You lift a paw to toy with, touch its velvety pads. Checkmate, your opponent says. She grins. Look too closely, did we? You need to be careful with Centilac chess sets. Her face is blank and white as the dome of the chess pawn. Get out. Get back to your ship until the waking dream of the coral clears. I'm going to give it another try. I'm willing to take a little bit more terror. 18 weary. One more try. No, nope, I'm just not going to do this. Everything's bad. Uh, let's buy some fuel. Uh, it costs 20. Let's get three. Not happy about that. God, this is about to get real bad because I'm going to fight that eel. Who was it that wanted the eel? Um. Let's 
Sup? Oh my god, no, it's got a million hit points. Holy cow, I didn't realize they were so tough. Goodness. That will take literally forever to kill. Okay, forget it. I have no idea how I'm going to kill one of those things. Goodness. Oh, man, how am I going to do that? I'm never going to finish that quest. I don't, it's, not, it's not really a quest. don't know. Let's get to the salt lions and get out of here. So anyway, uh, I took the time to play a really good demo uh, from, I guess, the most recent packs of... Uh, I've already discovered this island, looks like. Um, of Christine Love's latest game, uh, Lady Killer in a Bind, uh, which is kinky as fuck uh, and uh, definitely considerably more not safe for work than... Uh, the rest of her uh, uh, major games, major releases. Uh, but it does some really clever things with sort of how the visual novel works. Um, it's plot concept, you can, you can catch up on that, but something I really like about it is it kind of gets past the <sighs> sort of boredom that can set in with a visual novel when it decides to, to have its like long conversations between characters because basically no matter how well they're written you feel kind of like you're not actually interacting with a game anymore and so what she does is she allows you to sort of build up a list of interruptions that you can make as a conversation goes on and if you wait too long the interruption will go away and you're not able to say that thing anymore um and it's not a timing thing it's just like you're clicking through it's sort of the regular turn-based thing of a visual novel um anyway I like this a lot. Uh, I'm uh, uh, definitely going to use something like that for the the first game that Crooked Thimble is working on, because I've been working on how to keep its conversations uh, fresh, and that seems like a real good way. Um, uh, while still being vague about what it is that we're making. Uh, but it's, it's real good times. Uh, I recommend giving it a try if you've ever you know you played Nekopara when when we we talked about it on our podcast or you've you've played any of the visual novels that are that have come out like even 999 and and virtue's last reward i think would would have benefited from something of of that kind uh and so it's it's completely worth uh checking out it's a little five minute demo um and it's 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 good times. I was really surprised by the some of the mechanics that that came into play just for dialogue. Twenty units of spare cargo space. I would have to dump some supplies and some fuel. I think fuel is cheaper for me to get than supplies. I overspent. I could have actually made it home on what I had. Uh, uh, will you guys? Nope. Didn't need to do that. Shops. No shops, so I can't actually sell them back my goods. Uh, visit the Unmakers. The muscular pick wielders rest on camp stools, watching you approach. Passing hip flasks around, an unctuous overseer beckons you to visit you to sit. We get funding from the bazaar, that's true. Station 4? I wouldn't call us Station 4, it's a little grandiose. The stones are stuffed with secrets, but most of them are used as garden statuary or occult ballast. Most of them. Some go down to the places under the bazaar. More tea cakes? Hmm. Pile of port report. I want to carry Sphinx down to London. Let's ditch some stuff. Uh, let's ditch one of those, two of those, one of those, two of those. Done. Uh, 
All right. Let's do this. We got three fuel to get back home. It should be easy as pie. How's my terror doing? Great, because I had that relaxing thought about my lover and my child and all those wonderful things. Then my clothes got stolen by a sort of a monkey child. Uh, terrible brat. I mean, she gave me my stuff back, but I smell awful now. I smell awful. Like, I wish I had the option to go back to the, uh, to the, to the spring and bathe. Um, but I, it doesn't really... The game isn't that persistent. Although, if I get into port and everyone's like, Dear God, what's that smell? I'll be like, oh, b b well, balls. Oh, good, and I filled up my, uh, something away to a port gauge. Wonderful, wonderful. The revenue men. I don't have any legal things. This still bothers me. Let them do their worst. Collect messages from the harbor master. Let's see. I've got a free evening. Rose market's changed. Something's changed in the neath, and someone wants to sign on. Hey. supposed to give an outlandish artifact. I think it's the, the Alarming Scholar. Yes! And Searing Enigmas if I can get them. Uh, I might need the outlandish artifact for my lodgings, though. Oh. Purchase an elegant townhouse, which I can't do. Okay, and I can't arrange... Uh, I'm not going to look at the comprehensive report. I'm going to go to the Dark Spectacled Admiral. Uh... Yes, yes, you've seen Port Cecil before, Godfall. Uh, my, I shouldn't be doing this yet, actually, uh, because I will run out of uh, space for fuel, because I still need to return things, uh, deliver the Clayman, deliver the Sphinx Stone, Special constables, black uniforms, distinctive caps, the badge of the Ministry of Public Decency, wait with a cart. Sign. 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 Here's a receipt. Here's a discretion contract. Here's a penalty contract. Your vision is blurred by the end of it all. The cart rumbles off into the rope for coiling fog. Here's your reward. 500 Echo. Oh yeah. Almost there. Almost there. Uh... Who's the new recruit? Haunted Doctor. I wish the Haunted Doctor were a cook. Increases hearts and pages. Uh, I don't know what to do about this. It costs 50. I don't know, like... It costs 1,000 to buy the house. I think I have to sell. I think I have to go to the Roser's Wharf and sell my thing, actually. Because uh, I gotta sell it. 150 Echo. Lost an outlandish artifact. The veteran Privy Counselor holds a mirror behind the artifact and examines the reflection. Hmm, yes. 
Inferior to London workmanship, obviously, but the, this will make an, an acceptable conversation piece nonetheless. Pay the captain. Nice snapping trick. Good job. Uh, I'm going to go to the Alarming Scholar to see if I can get any uh, extra favors. No. Z stories. I have a hundred. Offer an intriguing snippet. Oh ho, zesty, zesty. This one will do very well, Shed. Thank you. Your payment. Fifty echoes and a fragment. I lost my intriguing snippet. This hasn't changed my relationship with them. Uh, now I can go back to the to the Admiralty. Uh, submit port reports. Polythreme. Empire of Hands. Such a ghastly place. A pause. You know, there was somebody here asking about it only recently. Delightful lady, as I recall. Most delightful. Yes, I shall take the liberty of forwarding her your address. Oh, interesting. Wisdom. Salt lions. Because they don't care. Uh, and what do you need? This port. Retrieve from the Chelinit. I can get to the Chelinit. I know where that is. It's awful. I've been there twice. Uh, let's see. My hull is a little damaged. Uh... To get supplies. How beloved am I? I've got two. Uh, I want to get. Oh, I'm going to keep the damn damage. Uh, visit the Admiralty Fuel Stores. Can I get cheaper supplies from you? Hmm. Darn it. Um, four, four. Right, I'm going to get this fixed for nothing. There we go. Uh, I have the money for it. I've got plenty of it for it. So, oh, what? Your travels have caught someone's attention. Purchase the elegant townhouse. Let's do this. Resting is now more ex expensive, but more effective. How much does this cost? 10,000 echo. To the Benthic College. I've never seen this before. A delightful invitation. Benthic... Let's make certain that that is correct. Yes. Benthic College is pleased to invite you... To an exclusive educational evening with Lady Agatha Treadgold, delightful adventuress, and raconteuse of thrilling true tales of feist and spunk. On the back is scribbled note. Please come to me afterwards, darling. Opportunity beckons. I'm totally attending the lecture. Why would I not do this? She said opportunity beckons. A trip to Benthic. Benthic is the most open-minded of the London colleges. You find yourself waiting for the lecture in a queue of students, devils, and bohemians, observed with some scorn by, pa by passers-by in Somerset colors. The delightful adventuress. Her feet have trodden lands in the neath. Her feet have trodden lands most in the neath have never heard of. Her eyes have seen every opportunity for fame and glory while there. An evening with the delightful adventuress, whoever she is. She knows how to pack a hall. Not a seat is empty as she takes the stage. The fine cuisine of the Chelinate, the darling claymen, all but a prelude, my dears. Her stories tend towards the fanciful and conveniently unprovable, but the delightful adventuress has the credulous audience spellbound for hours. Many of her tales of monsters in lost cities have a common theme. She visited them ahead of a certain Lady Leonora Fortescue, 
the quite adorable daring archaeologist whom she sparked a bracing rivalry with back at finishing school. The rest of the tales, bitter as sourest grapes, of being cheated of triumphs by the very same Fortescue, whose fanciful fictions are fit only for the penny dreadfuls. By the end, her stories are notably more bitter than boastful. She still receives a standing ovation. A business proposition. The delightful adventuress's masked clay man Barnabas escorts you to the principal of Benthic's study, where she sits sipping brandy by the fire. My dear Capitano! Firelight glimmers in her eyes as she raises a glass. I hear you are recently returned from the Empire of Monkeys? Hands, of course. It's a rare breed that can make such a voyage foolhardy, too, perhaps. She sips her brandy. I wish to charter you, or no doubt fine, vessel, to that private little island, ch primitive little island chain. There, I shall find what I need to show up the infernal Leonora Fortescue once and for all, and you, a delightful, the delightful adventurous squints, sizing you up. Hm. Sufficient compensation will not be a difficulty. A most mutually beneficial agreement. Arrangement. You will agree. D fuck yeah. I'm done. I'm down. Splendid. The delightful adventurous drains her dr glass dry. Then we shall see you upon the morrow for the voyage. Barnabas, pack my valise. Adventure awaits! It's so good. Now, finally, there we go. Uh, come on. Yeah, I'm, the, I'm the child's mother. Sure. Here it is. A small, warm, apprehensive, affectionate creature, treated gently. You may visit the child at your lodgings when you gain a free evening. You always get free evenings when you return to London. But here's one now! I love that this is actually like a currency, having a free evening, which is what it feels like. Uh, I'm going to do time with my family, because it's great. Your sweetheart comes and goes. They, they have their own complicated business, but they always return to your shared home and your child. Tell your child and sweetheart of the surface. Oh, because I've got a vision of the surface still. Yeah. Neither of them has ever seen the surface. Not yet. You have four memoir Z fever. Raise this high enough and you'll get a scion. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, and if I visit my study, create a shrine to stone, which takes captivating treasure and several secrets. Anatomical cabinet. Uh, I need a lot more outlandish artifacts to build a monstrous thing. I can write a will, though. If you have 200 echo, uh, should you die, this will ensure you and your heirs uh, retains your lodgings and the heirlooms you've accumulated. Uh, so, yes, I'm going to write a will. Uh, this might be a short adventure because I'm running out of money. Uh... Write the Zong of the Z. Yeah, let me get that right the fuck on that. I think I actually have to have all of the things. Huh. Interesting. There's all sorts of stuff here. I should look into, like, what they all do. Uh, so I've done everything with the Alarming Scholar, the Ventner's Desire, I still don't have any of the things you want, you lunatic. Uh, I should go shopping. Let's get some provisions. Uh, do I need more Foxfire Candles? Yes, because I never actually went down to Nuncio. Uh, do I pick up anything at the Chalinate? Um... Doop, doop. And doop, 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 doop. Uh, so at least 10 and 14 fuel. Uh, my cargo is basically full. Uh, but I will be quite low when I finally get there. So let's do that for now. Uh, let's go to my officers and let's uh, max out my hearts. Oh, I did not get any secrets. And I don't have any Mutra Salt. Let's see. You, I need Torpedo Components. I could buy five Torpedo Components. Oh, Jesus. I can't actually uh, do that right now. Uh, I could increase Veils. 
I need a serpent trap. And I have to have a lot of pages. Are you the one? I need to get to the Chapel of Lights, that's right. Which I haven't found yet. Uh, any other officers to speak to? Who, where is it that you want to go? King Eater's Castle. Uh, I can dine with her. Which I thought I'd already done. Maybe I haven't. I know this must not be the most interesting possible thing right now, but I'm trying to make certain that I've got all of the right objectives. I can found a colony if I've got the stuff. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Uh, it would be silly of me to leave at this point. Oh, wait, what time is it? What time is it? Let's do, uh, let's do another trip, I guess, actually. Um, uh, real quick, check the time. we got 15 minutes left to show. Yeah! Let's do this. I'm supposed to go to the Empire of Hands, uh, and, uh, I can hit the chill in it. Uh, I've got 14 and 15. That's plenty. Plenty. Plenty the Elder. I double-clicked again. Let's say what's what's the best way to get there. I could uh, drop at the Empire of Hands, go up to the Chelinit, and uh, stop by Polythrum to pick up some uh, some dudes. It'll be great, no problems. Uh, and I've got zero terror because I've been hanging out with my family. Like, this is fine. This isn't a horror game. This is nothing, nothing. Fine. It'll be just fine. As far as I can tell, the Z-Bat doesn't only finds islands, like it doesn't ever find other things. Oh, damn it. Gotta pass between the salt lines. Going around them is kind of a, kind of a pain. I've been working on a short story. I should publish that um, before uh, the end of the week. I'll probably publish, publish it Friday morning. Uh, put it out on my on my blog, uh, which I didn't uh, really update as often as I would have liked last week. Found a colony. What does that do? Uh, I actually don't know. Uh, I don't know what it takes to found a colony neither. Uh, I should drop by and see if it's. Uh, I think it might just take a whole bunch of supplies and a bunch of crew. Oh, shit balls. What's that in the corner? Oh no no no! I don't want to fight. Oh, I found Wilbert's Abyss. Great, wonderful. Lights off. Yeah, we'll just go parallel to this to this ship until it turns, hopefully to port. Great, wonderful. Everything's good. Once he's out of sight, lights on. La la la, nothing happened. Everything's fine. Hmm? Oh. Shit. It spotted us. It doesn't seem to care. Said it doesn't seem to care. I can actually handle a fight with a private frigate, but it just wouldn't be good times. map am I? Oh, okay, that's fine. I'll drop by Port Cecil again and do a... Uh, play a nice, pleasant game of chess. Hmm, what's this? Discovered crab cake! Hmm, crab cake. 
The air trembles. A breath of change passes by. No islands in the Z-Bass range. What is this region? Pigmoat. Pigmoat Isle. I think... The Dubois Maelstrom. But I think I can actually... Do something in Pigmoat Isle. Wait. I know Pigmoat Isle. I've... Been here. This is where the the rats and the the guinea pigs are. That's not what. The rise of Pigmoat Isle. Hail Cavia. The Neath's most adorable nation scurries around your legs. Centilac harvesters drag heavy bags of the island's bounty to their silos. Industrious rodents work hard on lowering edifices, some of them almost neck high. London will never believe a bloody word of this. Help Caveat resolve a dilemma. If I can do this, if I've got stuff. Purchase Santalac. Oh, well, that's not going to be very good. Visit the Rat Ghetto. Compile a port report. Of course. No one will believe this. Uh, steal the lady's eye. No. Mm, mm -mm. Help resolve a dilemma. Time passes on Pigmoat Island. A dilemma? How will you advise Pigmoat Island? A dilemma on Pigmoat Isle. A guilty rodent stands, his head bowed. The aide pushes him forward. Hairless advisor. This traitor stole food from our stores to feed a sick child, he claims. Do we show mercy or make an example of the wretch? <laughs> Advocate mercy and it will add gain spirit and civilization. Advocate, insist an example be made of him, it will raise might and spirit. No half measures. Insist the wretch be hung, drawn, quartered, and the pieces impaled on spikes as a warning to all and his family too. Uh... That also increases civilization, which is terrifying. I will advocate mercy. Forgiven and forgotten. The guilty rodent is released back to his family, all weaking with relief. Few claim justice has been done, but it is not the last such theft. And with each one, it becomes harder for the Cavians to tell where the line between clemency and weakness is drawn. Interesting. Next time I come back, I can help resolve a dilemma. That's really neat. This is this is really cool. Uh, I really do want Centilac. I know where I can get it now, though. That's interesting. Doesn't what kill me? Damn it! Oh, holy Moses! What terror am I at that I'm running into these things? Oh, it also could be time. Ugh. Maybe I need to. Maybe I need to invest in some better ship defenses. Better boat in general. There is a significant lag between real time, which is where the chat happens, and what is happening in on my screen. So, I don't fully understand references to things that are immediate. Um, drop by Fort Cecil. Oh, that's what kills me. Playing chess, of course. But, I, I mean, I can play a little chess, and I'll be fine. I should be doing it on the way back, not the way to. This is the island that rewards having a high veils. Hmm, I don't have that. Uh, it's veils or is it pages? Pages, high pages. They don't even have somebody to train me in pages. Uh, gather intelligence. Uh, something awaits you. Auroral rupture. 
A light grows in this far southwest. It begins like a distant bonfire, but very rapidly becomes brighter and brighter. It looks remarkably like sunrise. Some of your crew fall to their knees, other duck behind cover and shield their eyes. One cries, Don Machine Waking! Keep, take cover. Look around, but not directly at the light. Look into the light. I'm gonna do this one. All the colors rise in the rocks, the water, the crystal veins of the roof. The undersea is a rich, grassy emerald. The faces of your crew flash clear and strong. You've seen nothing like it since you left the surface. In this place, it is utterly wrong. The light fades suddenly. Men and women cry out, curse, one weeps. I have more terror. I have a memory of distant shores. I'm going to play chess once. I got distracted. Everything's bad. Uh, good. I thought I remembered this place. I can buy supplies later. Oh. <laughs> Crab cakes. I mean, if I crash into it, it'll kill me. Uh, I don't remember the name of the island that kills you because it's just a monster and it's not really an island. Um, I, I should, like, look that up because it would be a shitty way for Captain Penny to meet her end. Uh, but, uh, 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 they'll be fine, right? I will probably end this stream at the Empire of Hands, assuming that I survive to get there. Uh, oh, and I'll pass a little north of the Swallowing Isles to see if I can figure out why they're called that. <laughs> Although, honestly, if anything's going to kill you, I would expect it to be something called the Swallowing Isles. Either that or it's like the Sunless Sea porn parody. God, I bet there is a Sunless Sea porn parody. The mists of the Sea of Autumn get into your eyes, in your heart. It is not unusual to find yourself in un unsuspected tears. Ooh, a port. An unfamiliar port. What is this? The Mangrove College. The Mangrove College, a streaming sprawl of parasynthetic vegetation, and a village, barely a village. Hold walls, roofs in disrepair, stilts leaning dangerously. It looks to have been assembled by drunks in a hurry. Dock carefully. Engage an officer, maybe his daughter. <laughs> Hello, where are you headed? On second thoughts, I don't mind. Can I come aboard? Yes, I am an engineer, but I'm an engineer in a hurry. Yeah, of course, yeah, get on board. Come on. If anyone comes looking for me, well, I'm not accepting callers. Can I trust you to pass that on? You don't want them distracting me from my duties, do you? The Mangrove College is named for its scholars and philosophers. They have a long abandoned civilized comforts for the life of the mind. Sometimes they want those civilized comforts back. Uh, sure, I'll pick up a par passenger. The Cors Corsair's Forest, please. Gators Morn. No, I'm not in a hurry, but I think... I might stay below deck. I don't carry, uh, I don't carry the feet on me. You'll have to trust me when we arrive. Thank you. A pleasure. Bye. Eat, drink, and be merry. Uh, foxfire candles and supplies. The swamps around the village are full of mud, crocodiles, and vegetable treasures, including the notorious parasite called Solace Fruit. The fogs and spreading branches include, occlude all light. <laughs> Compile a port report! I gain supplies. The thinkers of the Mangrove College continue their untroubled and sedentary existence. New schools of philosophy are born and die like bubbles. Extraordinary poetries are written in water. The occasional retired pirate tries and fails to get invited to the salons. Oh, unpick the mysteries of the Z. If I pick up a bunch of Z stories, I can actually, like, do things. That's interesting. <laughs> I can spend an evening beach coving, or I can gather supplies. Uh, which I will do. I gained six supplies. Hey, that's cool. Uh, in which case, I'll burn a foxfire candle to go into the wispways. You can leave at any time, but if you get far enough, you'll generally find something interesting. Huh. 
Narrow waterways and quaggy paths, marsh lights and mud. Now and then, parasynthetic mosses like shaggy curtains. Now and then, a questing tentacle. Each event will take you further into the swamp, go deep enough, and you'll find something interesting. A calamity of ants. Shining bodies burst from pitcher plants around a thick mat of ant swarms in ambush. Flee! Falling behind, one zailer trips, and the ants pour over him like oil. His screams pursue you through the trees. I lose a crew. I fail at things. I consumed a foxfire candle. Everything's bad. It's time to go. Bye. Bye. Never mind. Nope, we're done. Mm-mm. Not at all gonna do that ever again. Well, I'll probably. I need to find this blem again. It seems like a cute little story. Do you have shops? Nope. Alright, no fuel here. Uh, okay, I've got a, I got a new destination I can go to. Interesting. Uh, the Zvet told me about the Melting Isles. That's odd. Like, why? Normally it only tells me about, like, ports. Hmm. Oh, down to the Empire of Hands. Uh, that doesn't look good. Pentecost apes. That's seven fuel. I got loads of fucking food. I know where to get more, too. I don't know where to get any fuel, though. I don't have to sell my soul for fuel. Yeah, I'm in a lot of trouble, actually. Because that's real bad. Hmm. 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 All right, adventuress. I've taken you to your place. <laughs> don't ruin everything. A delightful welcome. The delightful adventurous leans over the rail of the ship, sniffing the humid air with evident distaste. What a filthy, damp little place. Oh well, we shall endure. At the sight of the mayor hobbling up, she straightens. A thin, insincere smile spreads across her face. Ah, you there, my good primitive, she calls, striding down the ramp and clasping his arm tight. Now then, I come and search for your first emperor's vault. And for that, I shall be needing a few things. Some of your finest workers, and tools, and some food. Do you understand me? She shakes her head, barely waiting for a response. F-O-O-D, she repeats. Comprenas? Oh dear, I see we shall be here for a while. Listen, I hear you fellows rather like souls. Shall we discuss that, like higher primates? A payment for journey. Barnabas stays to settle up while her mis his mistress negotiates the value of her soul with the mayor. A man with no face. Barnabas removes his mask, and what looks to be a silent moment of great relief. Underneath is nothing. Just a flat surface where the face should have been. Ah, an unfinished clay man. One of those flawed products of polytheme that follow their own rules. If only you'd known that before he boarded. Of course, that's why the adventurous never mentioned it. He silently presents you with the agreed fee, dips his head in a polite bow, and lumbers back to his mistress. It appears she has struck a deal with the mayor. Oh, God. Oh, God. All right, folks. Uh, that's going to be the end of our recording. Uh, tomorrow we will pick up with the delightful tale of what happens with the adventurous now that we've returned to the Empire of Hands, and hopefully we'll find some damn fuel. Uh... Thank you for joining us. Uh, please do stop by our Patreon at www.patreon.com slash crookedthimble. Uh, we are producing a video game. We've got a couple of podcasts. We do this live stream. Uh, actually, we've got a podcast. Arguably, we've got a couple. We've recorded an episode of the other podcast, and it's never really worked out. Did I say tomorrow? Uh, oops. Uh, on Tuesday, we will 
delve into the Empire of Hands for realsies, once again going deeper and deeper into the stuff. Uh, we will uh, check out and see if Penny survives. I'm feeling pretty good about her survival rates right now, which is normally when she gets killed. So, uh, good times. I'm glad that I made a will. Uh, I have no idea where any fuel is going to come from. So, uh, I love you guys. Please check us out at the Crooked Thimble and uh, play more games.